think I will continue to press in every legal way possible, as I did by filing suit against the Internal Revenue Service. No American citizen should be willing to accept a government that uses its power against its own people. This wasn't an equal opportunity discrimination. This was targeted discrimination coming from the Internal Revenue Service that that determination came from the highest ranks of the Internal Revenue Service. So how can the President say there's not a smidgen of criminality when Lois Lerner invoked the Fifth Amendment, 41 witnesses haven't been interviewed, including the two that are here right now? How can he possibly draw that conclusion? Fireworks on Capitol Hill, to be sure, with explosive allegations about the IRS targeting scandal. Jay Sekulow, you saw him just a moment ago in the second soundbite. He gave testimony at yesterday's hearing. He joins us now, Executive Director and Chief Counsel of the American Center for Law and Justice, representing 41 of the targeted groups. Jay, good to see you as always. All right, I'm sure you saw the Obama interview you, with O'Reilly on Sunday. The president sort of yep. dismisses the entire thing as an isolated incident, boneheaded decisions by a handful of bureaucrats. Isn't there an email now that belies that? And what does it show? <laughs> yeah, there is an email that belies it. The president said there was not a smidgen of evidence of corruption. Yet, uh, just two days ago, the House Ways and Means Committee released an email that they got through their investigation which shows from the very highest level of the chief counsel's office, the office I used to work in, uh, of the IRS, where deputy chief counsels and associate chief counsels were in communication with Lois Lerner to develop new rules regarding 501c4 to restrict those groups. They wanted to do it what they called, quote, off plan, which means off the books so that it's not on the public calendar. And all of that was taking place while the targeting was going on. So this whole concept that somehow we're dealing with a situation, Greg, where it's, you know, just, you know, minor players, rogue agents in Cincinnati, all of that uh, proved to be incorrect. The Lois Lerner, we're looking at her now. She infamously took the fifth, uh, her right against self-incrimination. Um, you know, look, people don't do that unless they're in legal jeopardy or they think they're in legal jeopardy. And yet this is heading sure. in the direction of no jeopardy at all. They're about to close this investigation, aren't they? You know, they, you know the president uh, said there wasn't a smidgen of evidence. They, uh, there was a leak to the Wall Street Journal that there was going to be no criminal charges. And not one of our clients or any other client that's a victim of the IRS's illegal uh, targeting has been interviewed. And, you know, the interesting thing here, Greg, and you're a lawyer, is that the IRS has admitted its wrongdoing. And what they're trying to do now uh, through these rule changes is a post hoc justification for their acknowledged illegal behavior. So the reality is, I mean, look, we're in federal court on this. Uh, we're representing 41 plaintiffs, not just Tea Party groups, other conservative groups that were kind of just brought up in this dragnet. And uh, the reality is, I think at the end of the day, the more information that comes out, including the information uh, that we are now receiving with these high-level IRS chief counsel involvement in this. Right. I think this is the smoking gun in this case. And, of course, the chief counsel is appointed by the president of the United States. So the culpability here and the president, you know, how in the world does he know if there's uh, right. a completed investigation yet when Eric Holder says it's ongoing? I mean, the whole yeah. thing is it makes well, it doesn't it, make sense. But I think really the political realities of this, you can look at it one way and say this was a political cover-up. Legally, the IRS has been caught red-handed, and the American people, and certainly our plaintiffs, are not taking it lying But how down. is it possible that the DOJ and the FBI could end an investigation without ever interviewing uh, your 41 clients who are the alleged victims of, of what happened here? I mean, that doesn't make sense unless, of course, it's being ended by the lawyer chief investigator who we now know is a maxed-out donor to President Obama. Yeah, because the investigation is, is really pretty much a sham. We didn't get contacted by the FBI until the end of December, nine months after this scandal broke. And then they said they wanted to speak to our clients in January. And, of course, as we're getting this ready to set up, then it's leaked to the uh, Wall Street Journal that the criminal investigation is closed. One of my uh, lawyers that works at the ACLJ, uh, who is a former assistant U.S. attorney, uh, contacted the FBI and saying, wait a minute, you, you want to interview our clients? It's been announced that the investigation's closed. Then the president says there's not any evidence of corruption. And you've got Barbara Bosserman, and no disrespect to her, but she should not be the lawyer heading up this investigation. Yeah. She's, as you said, a max donor to the Obama campaign. 
There's all kind of, uh, you know, you're supposed to say above reproach in these kind of investigations. She should have stepped aside. Right. I think right now, Greg, the way this moves forward is a special prosecutor. Because mm -hmm. when you see these emails and you put them up on the screen, sure. when you see these emails and you understand what's in them, you realize the highest level of the IRS was conspiring with Lois Lerner yeah. way before the scandal broke, at least a year before the scandal broke. And what they've attempted to do now is just cover their tracks. And that, by the way, while the IRS uh, new commissioner is giving bonuses uh, for 2013 to IRS employees. Jay Sekulow, good to see you as always. Thank you. Thanks, Rick.